The idea behind this lesson is to help you make the switch from a Windows computer to a Mac. During the next few minutes I'm going to guide you through some of the differences you'll encounter when using your Mac computer for the very first time. Though it can seem like Windows and a Mac are worlds apart, and, and on first impressions it might even feel like it's entering a whole new techno world. Though you will be happy to hear that there are some interface elements which are still vaguely familiar. For example, you still have a desktop. You're still able to access Windows panes, and you can still use many functions from menus. Most importantly, you can still use keyboard shortcuts to accomplish tasks quickly. There are four elements to the operating system that we would like to concentrate on this lesson. One of them is the Macintosh hard drive. When you double click on it, it activates the Finder, a Windows pane, that allows you to access the hard drive. We've also got what's called a spotlight up the top right hand side. And on the left hand side, we have the Apple icon logo. And finally, we also have the dock down the bottom, which has multiple icons on it, which we'll come back to later on to describe what they are. First of all, let's have a look at the Finder. Now let's put this in context for a second. In a Windows world, you were very used to clicking on the Start menu on the very bottom left hand side if you wanted to access a program. Let's say you wanted to open up Microsoft Word. To do it on a Windows computer, you would have went to the bottom left hand side, clicked on the Start bar, then you would have clicked on the option to click on All Programs, and then you would have clicked on the program you wanted to open, in this case, Microsoft Office. On a Mac, you're going to use what's called Finder to access what you need. Anytime you double click on the hard drive icon, which functions somewhat a little a bit like my computer in Windows, on desktop, you open a Finder window, which allows you to navigate through all the, the content on your hard drive. You can also make the Finder window active by clicking on the bottom left hand side here, which opens up Finder as well. When you open a Finder window, you'll see a sidebar on the left that provides quick access to the application folder. This is where all your software or applications live. You can also have quick access to your music. This is where your iTunes music is. You can access pictures, where your photographs will live later on once you learn how to take them off your camera. Where your movies are. And downloads. Downloads is a very useful tool that when you download anything from the internet, it automatically goes into this folder so you can easily find it when you need it. One of the other things you'll also notice about Finder within this left hand side pane are you can also see where your DVDs are if you have inserted a DVD or if you have an external hard drive plugged into the computer or a pen drive. Another thing you'll notice is a little eject sign beside some of the options. If there's an eject sign beside some of the options, it means that you can eject it from the computer when you're finished with it. Quite often, you'll often need to eject pen drives, hard drives, and DVDs or CDs. Another thing we were talking about earlier on was Spotlight. Now I want to access Spotlight, but first of all, I want to get rid of the Finder window. To do that, I have three options up on the top left hand side. You may notice that those options are very similar to the options on a Windows pane in XP, except normally they're over here. Well, these three th buttons do the exact same thing as the three buttons in XP. You've got the X, which closes it down. I'll just double click and open it again. You've got the minus, which minimizes it into the dock. I'm just going to bring it back up again. And you also have the plus one, which will expand it when needed. In this case, I'm finished with this window, so I'm going to click on the X sign. 